Hey, hey, hi, and hello. Welcome back for another one. Today we're going to be updating the last segment to my complete vinyl collection. This time, six months later, starting off good. We have a whole bunch of records right over there, as, oh, shit, as you can see. But starting off good with my favorite find of the past six months, we have this one here, Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness. Here we have the front artwork in the back. Very pretty. I love this album. I love the cover. I love the artwork behind it. I love every song. It's an astounding work of art for grunge as a genre. Inside of it, we have a whole bunch of records to fit. It's many, many song-long track lists, starting with this one. Got this one here. And yeah, all of them are black records, sadly, so it's nothing interesting to open up and get into. But what I am most excited about with this one is these two here booklets. Let's see if we can fit them both in the camera. There we go. Very pretty again. With the starting with this one, we have the original artwork for Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Opening it up, it contains the entire recording process, studio process, thought process behind the album and every single song. Going full in detail about the meaning, where the band was at a mental state writing all of these. And yeah, it's a really good read, and I highly suggest getting this whole box set just for that. And then this other one here, Melancholy and Infinite Sadness, contains all of the lyrics to every single song on here. Very, very nice. Continuing our run of the Smashing Pumpkins records, we have the band's second masterpiece, Siamese Dream. Inside containing all of the credits and further artworks for the album. Very pretty. And then we have, once again, very pretty, the back of this. A nice shiny blue alternate cover for the original. I really like this one. I'm glad I found it. It was a bit on the pricier side, especially for not much being held inside, but it's still worth supporting. One of my favorite bands ever. And on to the next one. We have Princess Purple Rain, Prince and the Revolution. One of the greatest albums of all time. A statement in prog rock and funk. Every song in here is perfect, especially the final fucking masterpiece of Purple Rain, the title track. That's probably in my top three songs of all time. I can proudly say nothing comes close to that one. So it feels really great finally having this on vinyl and being able to play its beauty on an actual record player instead of just on streaming services. And like the last time, we're not done with this artist. We're not done with Mr. Prince. We're not done with God himself. We got the box set for Purple Rain as well. You know we had to do it. Starting off with the first record coming inside of it, Prince looking fabulous on this one. And on the second one, Prince looking... And again, similar to the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness box set, my favorite part of this is the booklet containing inside... This booklet here containing all of the further artwork in the entire, entire history of Purple Rain as an album, a tour, a lifestyle, and how it affected Prince's career for greatness. And why stop this run of purple stuff when we have the Purple Haze itself, the Jimi Hendrix experience? Are you experienced? Am I experienced? Now I am, now that I've heard this a couple hundred times. Okay, okay, I swear this is the last purple related thing for this video, but we have Currents here by Tame Impala. Inside with one of my favorite full artwork covers I've ever seen. Just the way it fades all into each other with the nice psychedelic kind of feel to it is amazing. Speaking of great inside artworks to vinyl records like this, we have The Dark Side of the Moon. My favorite album of all time, quite confidently. So I was super happy when I was able to get a hold on this. As you can see, over here I even have both of the posters that came with it over on my wall. There it is. Oh, and some great news. Over here, as you could see in my last video with all the Metallica records, Kill 'em All, Ride the Lightning, and Master of Puppets, I was missing one. 
Just one. We all know which one that was, but I finally got it. Metallica's Injustice for All. Inside we have a little lyric sheet right here with the full album and some artwork on the back. This is one of my favorite finds from the past few months as well, as it also allows me to finish my Metallica collection of good Metallica albums. Bro, look at this silly little weirdo. Look at him. He's so dumb. <laughs> okay, anyway. Next one, we have my newest find, the Boy Genius album. This is one of my favorite indie rock albums of the past few years, and it's really nice seeing a return to these three very lovely singers here. And if it wasn't good enough, look what was inside. A nice orange, smooth record. It's going to be one of the most played on my record player just because of that. We also have my favorite booklets. This one with artwork and lyrics to every single song on here. Super, super cool. I'm happy with this one. And it was a very cheap price too. I'm glad Boy Genius came through with that. On this note of very sad albums, something much, much, much sadder than even the already kind of sad Boy Genius record, we have probably the most depressing album ever made, Have a Nice Life's Death Consciousness. If you saw one of my more recent videos of the unboxing of this, you already know everything that comes inside, so go check that one out up here. If you cared to see the rest, just know that this is one of the greatest albums ever released. Ooh, and then we have the most surprising album of this year so far. Lil Yachty's newest one, let's start here. The psychedelic prog rock kind of thing, almost a Pink Floyd replica with this album, is very welcomed, actually. There are some shortcomings on it, but at the same time, the overall vision and the sound it creates with it, and the high points as well, just overshadow it completely and it makes me excited for what's to come from this artist. Comes with a poster inside too. Let's start here. <laughs> I can't take this one seriously. We have the newest Metallica album, 72 Seasons. This one actually completely unopened, so why not just do a little bit of an unboxing right here while I talk about this album for me. 72 Seasons was, actually, I really liked it. It wasn't as much of a letdown as it was for many other Metallica fans. It did get dull at points, especially because every song sounds kind of the same. There's no really bad songs on it, but that's also, like, not in its favor. Because, you know, they take the same formula and they run with it, so every song sounds so similar, but in, like, a good way. So it feels like I'm listening to the same song on repeat for over an hour. But the last song, In Amorita, the 10 minute song, is one of my favorites. Post 2000 Metallica songs, actually. So I'm happy with that. Got some artwork inside. So this is actually a little lyric booklet. Never mind, we love those lyric booklets. <laughs> We got the sexy beast himself, Mr. Lars. Oh, and then inside we have this, 72. I think this is where you put like the little covers for all the different children on it. Let's give this a go. Look at that, now Lars is seven. That's the last one for now. Expect an update sometime in the future, probably around Christmas time, in honesty, because that's when these new records are going to come in for me. But with that being said, thank you all for watching, and I will see y'all next time. Goodbye.